In this video, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about creating a set of tabbed pages, uh, in other words, sort of a sub-navigation control that allows you to control um, whether the user gets to proceed or not, depending on whether they visited all the pages or not. So just to summarize, we'll just go through each page. I've set it up, but I haven't put the coding behind it here. Um, what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, a couple of different types of advanced actions and we're going to be working with variables. So I have an intro page here. Let's just uh, add a title to this here. We'll call this tabbed pages locked until Let's just keep that consistent. Locked until user clicks all tabs. And we'll create a subtitle here um, using variables and advanced actions. Great. So here is um, tab one. Uh, I've created the four tabs across the top. I've got some nice rollover effects. Uh, I have a video on how to do that with uh, um, smart shapes instead of buttons. And uh, the tab that's currently open um, is actually not a button at all. It's just a shape there. So it's very, there's nothing for people to click on or anything like that. And I've duplicated this slide. There's nothing, there's no coding behind this at all yet. There's a next slide button on all of these versions of the pages. If you go down to see all the different, uh, I've got four different pages with four different tabs, a next slide on each one. And you'll notice that I've set the properties for the next slide button to be not visible in output. So let's just make sure that's checked off on all of those. Yep, that's fine. And then there's, of course, a final um, final page of the course here. And we could just say something like, congratulations, you've completed this exercise. Interaction, we'll call it. Put a little comma there. So good. I think we've got everything set up here. So again, just to summarize, we're, we're going to create actually four different variables and each of these variables will store the information as to whether the user has clicked tab 1, tab 2, tab 3, and tab 4. That's why there'll be four variables. We'll also create uh, two different advanced actions we're going to create, or two different types of advanced actions. We're going to create a standard action uh, for each one of these tabs, which will keep track of whether the user has clicked those tabs or not. And then we're going to create a tab check advanced action, which is, an, uh, which is a conditional action that will check, uh, again, check whether uh, whether all four tabs have been selected and then show you the next button which will allow you to proceed to that final congratulations slide. So just, uh, just to clarify here on each of these pages that next slide is not going to the next slide but rather all of these buttons this next slide button here will always bring you regardless of which tab you're on to that final congratulations page. So from the user's perspective, the tabbed pages are really not separate pages at all. It's one page with sort of sub-content or sub-topics. Um, I use something like this when I'm designing a course where let's say I've arrived at a certain page. I have enough content um, that it's going to go beyond one slide of information. So uh, I'll tab it off. I, I want to keep it together. Uh, I want people to remember it. Perhaps there are four steps in a process or there are four stages to a procedure or what, whatever it might be. 
So let's get started. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to create our four variables. And the easiest way to do this, uh, we're on the first page here, but you could do this from any page. Click the Project drop-down menu and select Variables here. And this will bring you the, uh, the Variables window. And you just simply add new. And this is really as simple as it gets. We're going to call these variables click 1. We're going to assign initial an initial value of 0. And then we're going to click Save. And that will show up in our list of variables below. And I'll do this uh, a few more times here so that I have uh, click 2. And then click three. Again, don't forget to make the initial value zero. And then lastly, click four, zero. There's probably a few different ways you could do this. This is what works for me. Um, but, you know, I would recommend practicing this process so that you're comfortable using advanced actions. And hey, if you can figure out a more efficient or easier or faster way to do this, then um, my hat's off to you. And, and certainly I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, if you share that information in the uh, comments below. So I have my, uh, my variables here. That's good. I'm going to close this window here. Now I'm going to create my advanced actions for each of the tabs. So there'll be an advanced actions for each one of these. So again, I'm going to use the project drop-down menu and select advanced actions. Alternatively, you could press Shift F9. And uh, so we're going to start off with standard actions. And we're going to call these, well, we'll call them tab 1. And what we'll do in tab 1 is we will increment, that's a command within advanced actions, um, we'll increment click 1, remember click 1 is the variable that we've created, by 1. But we also want to jump to that particular tab. That's going to be part of the standard action. So we're going to uh, jump to slide. And in this case, um, we're going to slide 2. I know that might seem a little confusing, but remember, we have a title page as well. And we'll just save that action. And probably one of the coolest features of advanced actions is the ability to duplicate advanced actions. Because we need almost exactly the same standard action for tab 2, 3, and 4. So let's just duplicate this action using this button. You'll see in the upper right hand corner of the advanced actions window. So this is now called duplicate of tab 1, but we'll rename that tab 2. And we will change click 1 to click 2 and we will jump to slide 3 and uh, update that action and now we'll duplicate this action again and we'll rename it tab 3 change this to click 3 again we're just incrementing by 1 and we're going to change that jumping to slide 4. And we'll update that action. And again, one last time, we'll duplicate this action. And we'll call this tab 4. And we'll change the variable selected to click 4. And instead of going to slide 4, we'll go to slide 5. Slide 6 is the final congratulations page that we've created. So we'll update this. Now there's one more um, advanced action that we need. And in this case, it's a conditional action. So we can just simply change the action type to conditional actions. And we'll give it a name. And we'll call this tab check. But again, you, if you've got a better name, no problem. Uh, you can use whatever name you wish. Um, now, when you're doing a conditional action, we're saying if a condition is met, 
do the following actions. So we have to first of all set up the condition. Now we're going to perform this action if, in this case, all the conditions are true. You could also do this if it was any of the conditions was true. Um, that would be a case of if you wanted someone to proceed if they did one of five things or one of six things then these things will happen but in this case we want them to do all things which in this case is look at the information on all four tabs and you can come up with custom scenarios as well which I won't get into today so if all the conditions are true and what that is the check that we're going to do is we're going to look at the variable click one and we're going to say is greater or equal to because of course the user may visit these tabs more than once so the the variable will, will the variable click one let's say they visit tab one three times um, the variable click one will become three so we want to say greater or equal to one in other words anything except zero and we'll just put that in and we'll do the same thing for click to greater or equal to the literal value of one and then variable click three is greater or equal to the literal value of one and then of course the variable click four greater or equal to the literal value of one so in other words if the user has clicked all four tabs then what we're going to show are that those click next buttons right that's what's going to happen uh, but remember it's not just one button it's actually um, there are four different uh, click next buttons and uh, you can name these buttons uh, something more appropriate but I've left them as is because they worked out to just be button one two three and four so it's easy for me to remember but you can give them a unique name if you want help remembering which buttons are which especially when you get a course where they're could be four or five hundred buttons by the time you're done. This is a relatively small example so it's not too hard. So in the actions we're going to select show because remember we made these buttons invisible and we're just going to do that for all buttons. Show button two and show button three and show button four and that's our tab check advanced action now we can save that and close the the window here and now what we need to do is we need to apply those uh, various advanced actions to certain things on this course and so I'm going to start off with the first tab of the tabbed content actually no we'll go to the title page here we're gonna click this next button here and um, we're going to change this to execute advanced actions and tab one because even though this isn't part of the tab clicking the next button from our title page in effect is clicking the first tab and bringing you to here so that's taken care of that's done there so tab one's done and now we have tab two three or four so I can do these sort of all in one shot so we can actually do, do a, execute advanced actions and we'll just change that to tab two and then just change this to tab three and this to tab four and what we're going to do on the page load is execute advanced action as well 
and here's where we're going to do our little tab check. So every time we visit one of these pages, the advanced action will run. Hey, have we clicked all the tabs yet? That's basically what it's saying. And if not, it doesn't do anything. If so, it makes those next buttons visible. So let's duplicate this on the remaining slides here. We'll just highlight the tab 1, 3, and 4. We will execute advanced actions. We'll leave it tab 1 for now, and then I will just change these to 3 and 4. Remember, our navigation is built into these advanced actions as well. And we'll do the same thing. Oh, sorry, we got to go here. And on the page itself, uh, execute advanced actions, tab check. And in fact, you could do all of these slides in one shot. So execute advanced actions, tab check. So that's now on all of the slides. So let's just make sure we have tab 1, tab 3, tab 4. And we'll execute advanced actions again for this guy. Tab 1 is fine, and we'll just change manually change tab 2 to tab 2, and tab 4 to tab 4, and then one last page to make those changes. We'll do the same thing as before. Execute advanced actions, tab 1, and then we'll just manually change tab 2, and tab 3. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. And uh, let's test this out. So we'll just do a preview. We'll play the whole project. And I'll just summarize what we're seeing happening as it occurs. So just give this a moment to generate. So here's our title page. We're clicking the next button here, the next slide button that I've created. And now we're on tab one. And if I was to do, uh, click tab 2, and tab 1, and tab 2, and tab 1, you notice that the next button isn't appearing. Because again, we want to control that the user has seen all three tabs before we allow them to continue. So let's click tab 3. We're on tab 3. And what we should see here is tab 4. And now we have that next button. And incidentally, that next button has been added to all of those slides that each one has a tab for. And now we can click the next slide. And that brings you to congratulations, you've completed this interaction. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing, I, I want to strongly encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you'll see all the new videos as they come out. And if you like this video in particular, don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up.